Good morning. We're on the one day countdown. It's day 46 in Portbrush, Northern Ireland. There's Gord. I need to get a ride back to Dunluce Castle to pick up where we left off yesterday. Um, Gord's super, super cycle man, so he's going to cycle that distance plus today's 20k. And uh, we'll see where it takes us. Hiking the A2 between Port Rush and uh, Dunseverick today with a rendezvous with Gord somewhere along the coast uh, to see and traverse Giant's Causeway. World famous. That should be cool. Weather report. Well, you know. between the parade of people coming down the hill behind me and the busloads of tourists <laughs> and walkers ahead of me, I see more bodies right now in my field of vision than I've seen in my entire six weeks on the trail <laughs> in the whole country. This is a popular spot. Welcome to Giant's Causeway. Well, unfortunately for Gord and I, our meetup plan for today did not work out at Giant's Causeway. And that's really is unfortunate because one of the things that we have in common is we love to travel and have adventures together. So I was really looking forward to sharing some of the special moments of the last few days with him. And as it turns out, there's so much more coastal path as a hiker, I love, but as a couple, it's kept us separate for most of the hours of the day and then we meet up more towards the end of the day. So now that we missed each other at Giant's Causeway, I guess we're not going to see each other at all till the end of the day at the B&B. Hey, Dunster Barrack Rambler's Rest. No vacancies. That's because we have a reservation. <laughs> I see Gord there. Hang on. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, Gord. Yes. Guess what? What? It's my last day on the Ireland Way. That is outstanding. What an, what an accomplishment. 
So it's a bit of a bittersweet return to the trail this morning, just down the road here in Dunseverick. There's a bit of a melancholy feeling when you're concluding a long distance trail. I felt it the first long distance hike that I did on the Pacific Crest Trail in 2019. You don't feel like you have a new home. You sort of start to feel like you have another home and that the route that you're on, the trail that you're on, has now become your home in addition to your house and home. And uh, it's tough to think about leaving this home, this life, and I have everything I need on my back. Right now I could go anywhere in the world and be self-sufficient with what I have on me. And that's a fantastic feeling. But it is time to go home. I've worked through a lot of personal um, growth with regards to the pilgrimage and mom and dad no longer being with me. I've uh, really learned a lot about the rural Irish culture and so much about my parents and their, the root of so many of their behaviors, expressions and tastes and um, beliefs and that has been invaluable. The trail angels on this trail have been unbelievably kind. Such ambassadors for the Irish culture. I'm just so grateful to them all. But I am excited, <laughs> I really am. This is, um, it's enough. You know how sometimes you go home and you say, oh, I wish I had a bit more time. But no, this has been enough. 47 days and uh, uh, I'm just ready to conclude it in a, in a really healthy, satisfied way. So let's do it. <laughs> there are paddle boarders out there in the rain, in the ocean. It's about 14 degrees. The water's probably around the same temperature. And they're cliff jumping, obviously with a, a tour group, so they're doing it nice and safely. Oh, I bet that's fun. So this is Dunseverick Harbour, and this is a really cool passage that um, you can only do when it's low tide and the tide is just on its way out so everybody's got their fears on the trail and one of mine is falling on slippery rocks into a river or waterfall not about the water because I'm a strong swimmer I've had a few falls where I've been pretty significantly injured and uh, I just don't want to fall on the rock so coming across those very slippery rocks because the tide just receded about an hour ago and they were wet and slimy but I did it first accomplishment of the day next accomplishment oh I don't know finishing the Ireland way 1011 kilometers the early resources that I saw said 1000 but apparently it's 1011 I'm sure I made it a, about a thousand 211 with all my wrong turns and backtracks but in any event by the end of today it'll all be behind me well this is cool this is the other end of the east end of the Dunsverk area So this is White Park Bay with a cave and everything and I wanted to show you one of the reasons our B&B &B was so spectacular last night. See that white building, the white home there and there's a barn a little bit behind it. Right beside that barn is where we were and we were looking out to this view. 
in the fog and the mist, but we knew it was there. And that, now I think I get to go for a beach walk. <laughs> I heard a couple of waves crashing on the other side of these rocks. I was like, no, tide's going out. You may not come in and sweep me out to sea. I am counting on tide going out. Okay, at the other end of White Park Bay Beach, and it's time for some low tide rock hopping again. And a gate to exit a tidal cliffside. At this end, it was easier because now the tide's been down for a couple of hours, so the sun had dried the rocks. And you know, although there's still seaweed and um, slime. A lot of the, wa the rocks were very dry, so it was much easier footing than coming onto the beach. Oh my gosh, will I ever get to Valley Castle today? Look at the size of these limestone kilns. Limestone production in the 1700s. A very busy little harbour sending off burned limestone and set stone for export to the major parts of the British Isles from this little harbour. This concludes my last views of the Irish coastline as I head uphill out of Ballantoy and uh, to a little bit of a road hike and uh, well last few K into Bally Castle I saw everybody's cheerleading comments on Facebook just now because I stopped Oh, it's gone down there. So wonderful. Oh, bit of seaweed there. <laughs> wonderful uh, little cafe with treats, ice cream, and so on. And that's uh, Carrick on Reed, where there's a rope bridge out to an island. But you know what? I thought I would be so excited to do that. I've just seen Ireland's rugged coastal beauty in its natural state. I'm really not drawn to places with the tourists even though te technically i guess i am one what's this what's this did you say bally castle i.e the end of the ireland way woohoo here we go i feel badly for all the hikers that take the bus for the last leg because it says there's no footpath on the road but the Ulster way actually goes up this very quiet road with the glorious last dish views last ditch views of the coast I feel like it's a an apron string that's just getting longer and longer and longer as I reluctantly walk away. I actually love that the trail has brought me back to a quiet country road that overlooks beautiful Irish countryside with cows and sheep and mountains in the distance and some threatening clouds and some glorious sunshine and blue sky because this is what was the majority of my experience in Ireland. Just the beauty of Irish nature surrounding me, 
360 degrees of unpredictable weather, <laughs> except during the heat wave. You could just predict it was hot and sunny. But I began to be able to predict the cow's behavior, the sheep's behavior, the dog's behavior. And this was all possible because I immersed myself in this trail from the beginning on my own. If you really want to grow in a hiking or walking pilgrimage, go solo. It's going to be okay. There are so many people out there in the world who care about you even though you're a stranger and will take care of you if you're in need. Now I'm at about, oh, less than 6K. Here we go. 1,007 kilometers hiked, only five to go, five! Excited? Yup. Guess what? Only four more K to go. <laughs> well, hello, Bally Castle. Boy, you kept out of my sight for a long time. And hello, last 3K! <laughs> might be a bit late telling me that now <laughs> well here it is the last side trail international Appalachian Trail last track to the finish only 2k to go what's one last overgrown grass track but this one has an ocean view and a finish line that is yet to be seen. Dun, da, da. I swear this is the most elusive town ever. I, I still can't see where the town is, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I see water and beach and houses. So oh, we're obviously getting into town. Folks, only one K to go. Yes, this is awesome. And you know what? I'm arriving strong. I'm arriving swiftly. I'm arriving with water in my bottles and food in my bag. That's really important. Never get rid of all your water and food. You never know what can happen right to the last second. Um, I still got some tread in my shoes. The same shoes. My Oboes Trail Runners, they lasted the entire hike, but they're going out as soon as I get home and uh, all my clothes lasted. I had everything I needed in my pack and I had everything I needed in you guys supporting me all the way. Oh my gosh, I see it, I see it, I see it. Right beside that tree. <laughs> I'm almost done. Now, where's Gord? <laughs> oh my gosh, she's not here. He's not here. How can I not be here? Brilliant! <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> hey, great. I'm I, done. I, yes, All great. the way from Castletown Bear. Oh, how long did it take you? Uh, 40 hiking days, 47 in total. I took seven rest days. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. my and husband how, just joined at the end. How did you find it? Uh, harder than Tough. anticipated. Really? Yeah. Uh, I have a certificate. Yes, I can that's give you. Yes. Well, here we are, Gord. It's um, the Ireland Way plus one day. And there is the Children of Liar sculpture where I finished yesterday. And in here is my certificate of completion. Oh, thank you. A standing ovation. Yes. Wow. We had a bit of a hiccup at the end that um, Gord was actually waiting at the gates to the park. And I walked right past him because I was looking at the sculpture. And I was looking in the other direction. Oh, uh, it was just bad Ten timing. meters of separation. But it was a very emotional end, and it still is, because this is for mom and dad. And um, everybody's been really supportive, and I have a better understanding of grief and grief healing now. And if anyone wants to go for a grief healing walk, I'm happy to do that with you. Or do it yourself, because I think it really does help. So now we move on. We go back to Dublin, and we visit family, and then back home. And uh, who knows what our next adventure will be. But thank you everyone for your support and for following along. I always appreciate the cheerleaders in my life, both uh, the loud and the quiet, and those who are just holding me and my family in your hearts. Thank you. Do you have anything else to say, Gord? Nope. <laughs> Gord's the best support crew ever. Thanks, Penny.